When Silicon Valley Bank collapsed last week, it set off a domino effect across the banking industry. Signature Bank failed, too. First Republic had to be bailed out by other banks. Overseas, Credit Suisse needed a big loan from the Swiss version of the Fed to stay afloat. And all that drama led a lot of us to wonder, how safe is the money I have socked away? And how did this all happen in the first place? NBC's business and data reporter Brian Chung explains in our Sunday Focus. The stunning collapse of Silicon Valley Bank last week sent shockwaves through the banking sector. Silicon Valley Bank becoming the second largest bank failure in U.S. history. Rattling customers. They just came out and told us that the bank is shut down. And stoking fears of another financial crisis. Americans can rest assured that our banking system is safe. SVB, true to its name, grew as fast as the tech industry did. The bank of choice for startups and venture capital funds, the bank expanded at a breakneck pace, all the while putting much of its capital into safe, long-term investments like U.S. government bonds. But as inflation hit and interest rates rose, those investments became far less valuable. The market did not respond like they thought, and the ramifications were that they ran, were running out of money. Word soon spread in the tight-knit tech community that SVB was selling investments at a loss to shore up its balance sheet. Panic crept in, and customers suddenly wanted their cash back fast. On March 9, SVB customers withdrew $42 billion in just 10 hours. A day later, SVB collapsed, followed shortly by Signature Bank. U.S. bank regulators quickly moved to stabilize the markets this week, announcing they would fully insure all deposits at the two failed banks, meaning people would get their money back beyond the $250,000 FDIC limit as the Fed offered a new way for banks to get cash quick if they needed it. This week's actions demonstrate our resolute commitment to ensure that our financial system remains strong and that depositors' savings remain safe. On Thursday, a group of 11 major banks also pledged $30 billion to help prop up First Republic, another troubled bank that saw customers start to pull their money, sparking fears it could be the next to go. Are you worried about this same issue playing out at other banks as well? I think the vast majority of the banks, including the regional banks, are, are quite healthy, uh, quite sound. But fear, fear uh, is a real problem. Former FDIC chair Sheila Baer says the root cause of these closures is as old as banking itself. It's a classic Jimmy Stewart problem. Baer, of course, referring to that holiday classic, It's a Wonderful Life. Don't look now, but there's something funny going on over there at the bank, George. George Bailey, played by James Stewart, begs his customers not to withdraw their money in a panic all at once. You're thinking of this place all wrong as if I had the money back in a safe. The money's not here. If depositors rush into a bank and want all their money out at once, they will force an otherwise healthy bank to close. The Jimmy Stewart era of showing up at your bank branch is over. Bank runs nowadays are an all-out sprint. Supercharged by smartphones and social media, people can shift money and so panic faster than ever. It's a not-so-wonderful sign that modern banking, for all its advances, is still at the mercy of our most primal nature. We can get through this thing, all right. We, we've got to stick together, though. We've got to have faith in each other. And Brian is joining us now. Hey, Brian, good morning. So listen, as you have laid out there this week, the markets felt a little nervous. I think people felt a little nervous. And now everybody's looking ahead to a key meeting from the Federal Reserve coming up in just a few days. Bottom line, what are they going to do? Raise rates again? Are they not? Where do we think they're going to land? Yeah, Hallie, well, prior to all the banking issues, the mission was clear, right? Lower inflation, make borrowing costs higher to take steam out of this economy and slow inflation from the 6% yearly rate it's at now to hopefully somewhere closer to 2%. But the bank blowups complicate that because one of the dominoes to fall that led to SVB's collapse was the Fed raising rates at the fastest pace since the 80s with six hikes of at least half a point in just the last year. So even though the expectation was for additional rate hikes to continue slowing inflation, now there's this concern that it could break more banks if they hit it too hard. So how are they going to thread the needle? Well, it's likely the Fed will raise rates by as small a move it can do, which is a quarter of a percentage point, if they choose to raise rates at all, stopping the upward trajectory. We'll have to find out on Wednesday, Hallie. Yeah, a lot of people looking toward that. Brian, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't miss the Today Show every weekday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific on our streaming channel, Today All Day. To watch, head to today.com slash all day or click the link right here.